Uh, good morning. Thanks for joining us. I, I, I would like to thank everyone for coming. Uh, obviously, it's a pretty big day. As you know, we just finished our, our state budget just uh, 45 hours ago, and we just had a 45-hour session before that. So I do want to say thank you for folks who are here. Um, this comes at an appropriate time because now the Senate turns its attention to real policy matters. And I am very, very proud to be introducing Senate Bill 250, which is the Pet Responsibility Act. And it, it's basically at the core of it is to uh, remedy a statewide epidemic, uh, as you know, that is costing California taxpayers $250 million a year in terms of euthanizing dogs and cats in this state. About a million dogs and cats are brought into uh, our shelters. In many cases, our animal control folks are bringing them in. And about half of them, 500,000 cats and dogs are being euthanized and the cost is 250 million dollars a year and at a time when local governments are thinking about their schools they're thinking about how to fix the roads they're thinking about how to create jobs uh, and we just had a budget crisis here in the state of California I don't think there's a taxpayer out there that wants to spend 250 million dollars a year euthanizing dogs and cats in this state it's clearly uh, an issue that needs to be remedied uh, it's a long overdue issue for California particularly, uh, and I think that this bill that we're putting forward this session in the state Senate, Senate Bill 250, actually addresses most of the core issues that we have to address in this state, and that is pet responsibility by owners. And, you know, the argument, as you know, in a couple of these bills in the past has been, you know, this is my dog and let me be responsible. Well, this is a bill that says, go to it. And in fact, uh, we'd like you to be responsible in a way that allows California's pet population to decrease, to allow the, uh, in many cases, to stop the killing of dogs and cats in this state at an enormous cost. And, and the bill simply says that if you're an owner, uh, if you would like to have your animal unaltered, then get a license for that. It simply says, take matters into your hands if you feel very strongly about having an unaltered animal, the simple remedy to that is to go to your lo locality, and ask for an unaltered license, and move forward. Um, the bill also says, in many cases, that if you uh, have a cat and it's going to roam outside, that it be uh, spayed and neutered, and that we look at these issues holistically. Uh, and I think the bill really puts the onus on responsible pet ownership. I mean, that's the key to this, and that is we're not mandatorily asking anyone to take this action, we are asking those who want to keep their pet in a responsible manner to take the appropriate actions that will actually reduce our pet population. So I'm very, very uh, proud to be working with such a great coalition that you see around me. Um, it's a very active coalition, and more importantly, uh, it's a coalition I think will not only change California, but will change this nation, and hopefully abroad. Uh, and we do have some wonderful speakers here. I'd like you to hear from them. Uh, I'd like to introduce them, if I could, in the order that they'll speak. Uh, we have uh, Dr. Uh, Allen, help me, Judy, with this, I don't want to pronounce it, <laughs> Dr Drusy, uh, who is the chief veterinar veterinarian at the Riverside Animal Care and Control, and also the mayor pro tem of the city of Yucaipa. We have Brenda Mitchell, who's the humane educator, shelter worker in Central California. That's my part of the woods. Uh, Lisa Carter, who's the director of the Santa Cruz SPCA, and I'm very excited she's here because you can actually see a real life case of reductions and how it will actually help California. This is our live test case. You're gonna hear a lot about Santa Cruz as DeMille moves through the state Senate. Uh, and I'm very, very proud uh, to have Matt Grant, who's the star, as you know, of The Bachelor, London Calling. I'm very excited that he's here. He's promised me as soon as we're successful uh, in California, he's gonna take this abroad. And we're very excited to have him start here in California with us today. And of course, I'm very happy to have Lacey uh, Connor here, who most of you know, uh, is not only the VH1 star, but has Heroes Canine Rescue and Adoption. has been leading this charge for a good many years. I'm very excited to have her here as well and look forward to hearing from her. And then we're going to have a few more speakers after that. Uh, we have uh, Kristen Gross, who is the director of the Madera County Animal Control. And she's not here yet. So <laughs> let's, let, we have those five speakers. Let's, um, if I could, let's let you hear from them, and then we'll take some questions for you in terms of the bill. So, uh, doctor, you want to go ahead? Good morning. Um, I am very pleased to be here today to support uh, Senator Flores and work with him on SB 250. Uh, the Riverside Department of Animal Services has been working on a spay-neuter ordinance uh, for the past three years. We engaged a process where we accepted input from the general residents of the county, um, other animal control jurisdictions, veterinarians, and breeders. Uh, we include, included years of research on the existing legislation, 
a scientific review of the health and uh, welfare aspects of the spay-neuter surgery, uh, a cost-benefit analysis of the existing options, um, and a statistical analysis of, of the various formats. In fact, um, my master's dissertation was based on the um, influence of the Vincent and Hayden bills on the stray animal population in the Orange County Animal Shelter. What became clear to me uh, is that there have been considerable, considerable improvements. Uh, those improvements have been enacted through education, uh, spay-neuter advocacy by the veterinary profession and by animal groups. Uh, the shelters themselves have gone the extra mile and increased adoptions and redemptions to lower the population. And just about every jurisdiction has some level of differential licensing uh, that convinces people to spay and neuter their animals. But the underlying problem remained and remains today. Uh, there are still too many dogs entering the shelters of California. Too many dogs, too many cats. More animals than the public can adopt. Um, more animals, frankly, than the shelters themselves were designed to support. Uh, and for far too much euthanasia is practiced as opposed to shelter medicine. This simply is a supply side problem, and a reduction can only be acquired through a reduced fertility in the animal population. Upon hearing the concerns uh, in our process in the county uh, and throughout the states, uh, through the public meeting format uh, and meetings with breeder groups, uh, two main issues evolved that uh, seem to challenge uh, this process. Uh, one, the foremost, was the label that everyone said uh, we should be going at the, quote, irresponsible breeder. Everybody in the room has always been responsible breeders. Um, and that animal services should go after the irresponsible ones. Um, and there was always an issue about the safety and welfare of the uh, actual spay-neuter process. In reference to the first concern, uh, this type of legislation, SB 250, does not set a standard by which everyone or through which everyone must operate. There are no additional requirements of the pet-owning population, uh, no age or function standards, and no performance matrices that must be met through this legislation. Considering the health impacts, uh, certainly the entirety of the scientific literature indicates that there is general consensus that dogs and cats which have been spayed or neutered lead happier, healthier, and longer lives. Under most conditions, the earlier the procedure is performed, the better the animal is for it. Um, these sterilized pets are frankly not looking for love in the wrong places and getting themselves into trouble, nor are they likely to develop behavioral uh, problems later in life. As a result, it became obvious that a, that an approach similar to the seat, initial seatbelt laws was in order. Uh, in fact, last month, the, some would say, conservative Riverside County Board of Supervisors passed uh, an ordinance which is virtually identical to SB 250. Why then am I here today? Uh, lots of people would ask that, but frankly, the pets that we all own, that you all own, do not recognize jurisdictional uh, boundaries. Um, nor is the problem located to Riverside County or Los Angeles County, Sacramento. Uh, the statewide euthanasia numbers and the cost to the taxpayer is simply unacceptable. Our, in our state, with 58 counties and over 260 uh, cities, if anything is to have a meaningful impact, it would be SB 250. It creates four simple things. Responsibility of pet ownership. It creates a lev level playing field throughout the entire state. It is quite simple. It is very easy to understand. And the enforcement is left to the mechanisms of the local jurisdiction. The, the state does not dictate how this uh, particular piece of legislation would be enforced. Thank you, and I'll be available for any questions if you have some afterwards. Hello. Oh my. 
Well, good morning, everybody. My name is Brenda Mitchell, and I am a humane educator for the Central California SPCA. And I'd like to start off by thanking my senator, Senator Dean Flores, <laughs> and let you know how proud we are that Senator Flores has decided to fight for us. It's really impossible for me to stand here today and let you know what this bill means to us. Because unless you have lived in our world for a period of time, no one can truly understand. You see, we are those individuals that for some reason are often labeled uncaring and somehow hardened. People want to believe that we get used to what we have to do. Perhaps that is because it's easier to believe that notion than to face that it is something we live with that breaks our hearts every single day. And it's the kind of heartbreak that takes away your breath and makes your chest hurt. We're often haunted by the faces of those animals that we could not save. In this same way, it is easier to believe that the animals do not suffer or know what is about to happen to them, that they have feelings, emotions, or that they also suffer heartbreak. And this is a heartbreak for both of us that our community could stop. Often we hear, I could never do your job. I don't know how you do it. And my answer is simple. After your eyes have been opened, how can you not care for them? But we cannot understand how anybody could turn away from something as simple as a solution like SB 250. For over six decades, we have been trying to educate our community and still, we have to decide every single day which really great dog will get one more day or which wonderful house cat is worth saving. And the reality is, the answer is simple, every single one of them, every last one. We as educators would love to believe that our dedicated hard work was efficient enough to make this difference. We are constantly searching for areas where it has, looking for hope. Truthfully, we only see change where laws are used in conjunction with education. One of my good friends says that you cannot legislate compassion, but you can legislate responsibility. Please consider this well-written bill as a move needed to effectively reduce animal overpopulation in California. We're here today wearing our blue shirts, our blue that represents our hearts, our dedication, and our determination We'll continue to fight, and we will do this until every single dog and cat is as important as the one that greets you when you walk in your door tonight. Thank you. Good morning. I'd like to extend my sincere gratitude to Senator Flores. Thank you very, very much for carrying SB 250. My name is Lisa Carter, and I'm the Executive Director of the Santa Cruz SPCA. I've been with the Santa Cruz SPCA for over 15 years in numerous capacities. Volunteer, former Board of Directors President, and currently, for the past seven years, I'm the Executive Director. Santa Cruz County passed a spay-neuter ordinance in 1995. Prior to the ordinance, when Santa Cruz warehoused nearly 14,000 animals. Each year, we would, we would routinely walk up and down shelter aisles, randomly having to pick six or seven dogs or cats for no other reason than we were out of space. We would kill them simply because we had incoming strays and there was no space. It is inhumane to ask shelter workers to pick out and euthanize healthy, adoptable animals, only because there is no more room. Today, the shelter takes in 7,000 animals per year and no longer euthanizes because of lack of space. A new Santa Cruz County public shelter opened this past September. This shelter was one kennel smaller than the shelter that it replaced. Um, other shelters in California that are being built are two to 400% larger than the shelters that they replace. This truly pr it proves our success in Santa Cruz County. There was much debate back in 1995 whether Santa Cruz County was doing the right thing. We made the right decision. 
Since that time, thousands upon thousands of lives in taxpayer dollars have been saved. There are still plenty of mutts and purebred animals to adopt and buy. The responsible breeders in Santa Cruz County work hand in hand with county animal services. The accidental litters have all but disappeared. Euthanasia has decreased well over 70%, even with our human population increasing 15%. Everyone is doing their part to ease the burden of overpopulation and its financial impact of the County of Santa Cruz. We want, it to, we want the same for our entire state. Thank you very much. Good morning, uh, everyone. Firstly, uh, thank you to Senator Florence for uh, carrying SB 250 and taking the lead in forward thinking and common sense legislation. I, I feel pretty humbled after listening to some of these speeches. Um, humbled and, uh, frankly, feeling pretty worthless that I haven't done more. Um, from the earliest days I can recall growing up as a child, um, I realized that my life benefited massively from the love and affection given by animals. The time herding up chickens in the back garden with Heidi the sheepdog or exploring the attic with George the inquisitive cat will never be forgotten. They were loving and smart friends and family members. Whether they would have agreed to me coming on a cheesy reality show in this country is a debatable question. <laughs> in the UK, with this love of animals from a young age, I went on to support the RSPCA, which is the Royal Society for Protection and Cruelty for Animals, and I also helped local support shelters. Then I came to the US in, uh, on the search for love, <laughs> or whatever it was. Um, and randomly, I bumped into someone just after filming in L.A. who worked for the Humane Society of America. That individual told me some shocking statistics, quite frankly, ludicrous figures. In California alone, half a million pets, dogs and cats, killed every year. I was appalled. I realized that something needed to be done, and if I had that 15 minutes of fame, then I was going to use it. So I started getting involved with the Humane Society of America. And my main area has been, right from the start, spaying and neutering of pets and to deal with this ridiculous overpopulation problem that we have in this state. I was not only just shocked how we could think of tolerating this level of euthanasia, but with my financial background, I was also quite frankly amazed that we could afford it. $250 million is a hell of a lot of money. So, I just want to finish off by concluding and just saying that I'm deeply honored to be supporting this truly amazing push here on SP 250. And uh, just to thank everyone who's actually at the grassroots level involved day to day in dealing with this very difficult, difficult uh, um, moments. So thank you very much, and um, uh, thank you again to Senator Lawrence. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Lacey Connor. I first would like to give big thanks to Senator Dean Flores for this compassionate bill and for having me here today to discuss this important piece of legislation. Through my rescue organization, Heroes Canine Rescue, we go to the city animal shelters on a regular basis and we rescue the dogs that are on death row. At the shelters, I have seen countless numbers of pregnant dogs, mother dogs with litters, and litters of young puppies with no mothers. I see more friendly dogs and cats coming into the shelter than I see leaving to go to their forever homes. Pet overpopulation is a reality. So what have we been doing about it? Well, over the last few decades, many animal lovers and even some celebrities thought, well, let's just encourage people to spay and neuter. Even Bob Barker of The Price is Right told his audience after every episode to spay and neuter their pets. 
But in spite of all the t-shirts and bumper stickers and buttons and public service announcements, the message of spaying and neutering continues to fall on deaf ears. The truth is, there just are not enough people who are voluntarily spaying and neutering their pets. Litters of dogs and cats continue being born into, into a society that has no room for them. The government's current plan of action has been to spend millions of taxpayers' dollars housing animals that no one will adopt, allow them to languish in an animal shelter for several weeks, and then kill them. And all the while, people continue allowing their dogs and cats to breed and give birth to even more dogs and cats. It's a vicious cycle. It makes no sense. And the way it's been going, there's no end in sight. If you keep doing things the same way, you will continue to get the same results. Things are never going to change unless the law changes. Even though doing pet rescue can be very rewarding, at the end of the day, there is never a sense of complete satisfaction because more animals die in shelters than we rescuers can save. As a rescuer, I have looked into the eyes of dogs and cats, knowing that they will never get to live with a human who loves them and knowing that their days are numbered. To me, it's an obvious answer. Pass a law that will require people to spay and neuter their pets. Spaying and neutering will save animals' lives. It will save rescuers like me from heartache and the finan financial burden that our nonprofit groups face. I say yes on SB 250. Okay, is there any, any questions? I see, I knew I was going to forget the website address. And And it, we do have a website up this morning. It's yes on sb250.com. So if anyone would, would like to get in any, any more information or participate in this movement that we are beginning today here in the state capitol, we encourage folks to please log on to that particular site. Um, let me just end by saying thank you uh, for everyone coming. And I know that this is a huge issue, and I particularly would like to say thank you uh, to everyone that's going to make this work in the capitol, because it's going to be uh, quite a battle here. It always is. And um, except that the difference is that you're starting on the Senate side, and we're going to make sure that this uh, gets to the Assembly, uh, hopefully by June, so we can get this on the governor's desk and signed uh, by the end of the year. And that's the goal of it. So we want to make sure we do that. So, so I look forward to working with you. Yes, you have a question. Sure. Get an unaltered license. That's what you do. Yeah, it's very simple. I mean, I think what we, we watched the arguments in the past bill last year, uh, and I think the, the key thing that, that if you look at the entire debate, it was really about let me be responsible for my own pet. You should allow me to make my own decision, and we're simply saying then it's time to make it, and it's time to make it in a way that uh, allows the rest of the responsible owners in California uh, to not have to hear some of these stories that were mentioned here today. Uh, you know, Lacey shouldn't have to be working on weekends trying to rescue dogs. You know, Matt looks at our particular country, and particularly California, and sees 500,000 animals euthanized. I mean, this is not the signal we want to send from this state. Uh, the, the better signal would be that we're progressive, thinking about things that make sense, and we ought to lead the nation, absolutely lead the nation in these types of legislation. So this is really where it should start. And I know that the, the governor is very much also into to, uh, leading the nation, and so this is a perfect bill to put on his desk uh, so he can sign this and actually uh, be able to look California in the eye and say it's time to be responsible and reduce the pet population in a way that we don't have to have you know, these types of euthanizations in, in California. Mm. <coughs> yeah. Well, the, the, the penalties are the penalties in each locality. This is why our local government friends are really going to like this bill as it moves through the Senate. Uh, there is, every locality has a set of standards for pets. Uh, we're not changing those standards. In fact, we're not adding one more standard to it. Uh, what we are saying is that if you're, you're not going to follow the standards uh, and you're going to have uh, animals, in many cases, out of that loop, then they need to be spayed and neutered. Um, and they need to be begin this process of moving the population forward. Uh, there mu very much has to be some personal responsibility in this debate, and this is going to be a very key issue as this bill moves through the Senate, and that is, you know, how responsible should pet owners be, and particularly 
how can they live in a society like California where there are other responsible pet owners in which are asking them to just do the right thing for the rest of us? And so uh, we hear many cases in the legislature that a few bad apples ruin it for the bunch. And I think in this case, uh, we're simply asking those few to participate with the rest of the responsible pet owners in California and help turn around this real, uh, really uh, bad situation that we have here in California. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you all for joining us, and we look forward uh, to working with you as we move the legislation forward. Okay. Thank you. <laughs>